Hey everyone, welcome back to my kitchen. My name is Mindy Banks. I'm the Flip Flop Chef. Today I'm going to show you how to make a simple salsa chicken and cilantro rice using Pampered Chef's Deluxe Multi Cooker. Let's go ahead and get started. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button to my channel while you're here. And if you're not already a member of my recipe community, please go to theflipflopchef.com. Click the button at the top to join the group and I look forward to seeing you there where I share thousands of recipes and a giveaway every single Friday. So if you're not familiar with Pampered Chef's Deluxe Multi Cooker, this is a pressure cooker. It also has sous vide function, yogurt function, so many different things that you're gonna be able to, to use this for. So let me give you just a quick look at our Deluxe Multi Cooker. I do want to show you or tell you that there is a power button on the back. So we have a nice power button here and it lights up all of the different features that you have. So <clears throat> you can do a custom setting. So if you want to set the pressure um, and the time, you can do that. We have pre-programmed settings, sear, egg, poultry, beef and pork, seafood, white rice, whole grains. We have a sterilized button so you can sterilize your bottles um, and other baby items, or you can use it to sterilize stainless steel items, yogurt, sous vide, slow cook, steam, dessert, beans, soup, and there is just so much amazing things to be excited about with this. We do give you a cooking guide so that you know how to use every single function. And I have videos on my channel that you can check out. And I also have a playlist on my channel for Pampered Chef's Retired Quick Cooker. So our Quick Cooker was very similar to the Deluxe Multi Cooker. We just added a couple of new features. So all the Quick Cooker recipes in my channel, you're going to be able to make right in your deluxe multi cooker. The buttons look and work just a little bit differently, but all of the other settings are pretty much the same. We did add that sous vide setting, which is something you can't do in your quick cooker. So let's go ahead and get started. What I wanna do is get all of our ingredients for our chicken ready to go. So we're gonna take the lid off, and I like that this sort of like makes all these fun noises. Inside, you're gonna have a six quart inner pot. So this is where you're gonna do all of your cooking. If you use this on a sear setting, it's just like using a piece of cookware on your stovetop where you can brown your meat, you can sear your meat, however way you wanna use that. You can do that right in here. It's just like a stovetop, but that's the pan that you're gonna use. We're gonna add in about two pounds of chicken. I like to use chicken tenders um, just because they are easy to cook with. When I'm grilling, if I'm using my deluxe grill and griddle, I like to throw them in the quick cooker. This is my um, eight cup um, leak proof storage container. It has that great plastic lid. I'm just gonna toss all of this chicken in and kind of press it down in a single layer. And then I'm gonna wash my hands real quickly. I would have used tongs, but I didn't get them out. Wash my hands real quick. <clears throat> and then we're gonna add Pampered Chef's Carnitas seasoning. If you like Mexican food, you're gonna love having this carnitas seasoning in your kitchen. I'm gonna do two tablespoons. And if you have a recipe that calls for taco seasoning, you can replace the taco seasoning packet with two tablespoons of our carnitas. <clears throat> I have a frog in my throat. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some corn and some black beans. So I've got a, a bowl here where I'm gonna use this to strain my corn and then I'm gonna rinse and strain some black beans. Now, my cans do have, a, this can has a pop top, but I do like to use this Smooth Edge can opener just so that I don't get a jagged edge on the can. So I attach this on the front of the can and then you're gonna twist all the way around until you bypass your starting point. And then you're gonna turn counterclockwise after you pass the front, turn counterclockwise. That's how you're gonna release the can from, or the can opener from the can. Peel this off, and the cool thing is, there's no jagged edge on the lid or on the can. You're gonna see me use the can opener a few more times. I'm also gonna show you how to make a really cool, delicious black bean dip. So let me drain off this juice here, and then I'm gonna pour the corn on top. And then next we're gonna do a can of black beans. Same thing, I'm gonna start at the front of the can and then I'm gonna go all the way around until I bypass my starting point. Now, once you start using this can opener, you're gonna feel um, that tension release and you're gonna know when you've gone all the way around. Uh, but until you get used to that, I always recommend starting at the front and I still do it every single time. Turn counterclockwise to release that. Pop off your lid, we're gonna pour in these beans 
And what I'm going to do is come over here to my sink, and I'm going to rinse these off, toss out any of that juice from the can, rinse these off, and let them drain just a second. And we'll add those in in just a minute. Give those a chance to drain off. I am going to take a bell pepper. You can use any color that you have in your fridge. Um, I'm going to use this one because um, it is kind of on its last leg. If I don't use it soon, it's not going to be good. And so I wanted to go ahead and take care of that. So I'm going to cut the top off. Then I'm going to take my scoop loop. And my trash can is right here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to scrape these seeds right into the trash. I started with the wide end of the scoop loop and then I switch to using that narrow end. Now for the top, I'm just gonna pop out that stem so that we don't waste any of our pepper. And I'm gonna cut this into chunks. We're gonna chop all of this with our salad choppers in a little bit. And so these do not have to be chopped any specific way. Um, you wanna chop them enough where you can fit this trivet on the top of the chicken mixture because we're gonna cook the rice at the same time. So one of the really cool things about cooking in a pressure cooker is you can do something called pot and pot cooking. It's where you take another pot of food and you put it inside of this pot of food and so you're able to cook two different things at the same time. All right, so remember our beans? I'm gonna give this a little shake. Pour this on the top. And sometimes I have to use my hands for this, um, but let's see, let me grab a scraper. Just sort of press this down because you have to make sure there's room for this other pot. So I'm gonna press all that food down. I'm gonna take this trivet. I'm gonna press it in, and you wanna make sure that you press hard enough to where you feel all three legs touching the bottom of the pot. If they're touching the bottom of the pot, then you're gonna have enough room for the next pot to go on the top. So let's go ahead and get our rice ready. So we are going to make cilantro lime rice, and we're gonna make that in Pampered Chef's ceramic pot. This ceramic pot will work in this deluxe multi-cooker. It also works in Pampered Chef's retired quick cooker. You can cook with this without the wrap or without the lid and without the lid in our deluxe air fryer. And this is also oven safe as well. Dishwasher safe too. So this is a really versatile product. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add one and a quarter cup jasmine rice. So I've already pre-measured that. I have one tablespoon of butter. Just toss that right in there. And then we're gonna place one teaspoon of salt. And this salt is Pampered Chef's coarse Sea and Himalayan salt. I just put it in the deluxe cooking blender and ground it up so that I can measure it out easily and it's not such a coarse salt. That's perfect for recipes like this. I'm gonna add, I have almost two cups. I just realized I didn't quite get that full to the two cup mark. I need to make sure I have enough water. We're gonna pour two cups of water right in here okay so we have our rice we have our water we have one teaspoon of salt um, i'm going to put this into my cradle i should have done that before i added all this food um, and then i'm going to add this silicone lid so the silicone lid does have venting holes so that this is going to vent the food while it cooks i find and this might be just my personal preference but i find it's easier to put the lid on after it's in the wire cradle because if i try to put it in the cradle with the lid on a lot of times that um, cradle knocks the lid off. So you're gonna pick this up, just press it down into the pot, and you see how this fits nice and flush. There's enough room on the top here for um, our steam. You have to make sure that there's room here. So as long as the three feet of that trivet on the bottom are touching the bottom of the pot, then you know you're gonna have enough room. We're gonna put the lid on here. I'm gonna turn this so I can see it a little bit better. I love these handles on the side. This thing is heavy now. I'm gonna turn this to the poultry setting. The pre-programmed setting for poultry is 15 minutes. So I'm gonna to press to select that. It has um, an option for me to set a delay time. I don't usually use a delay time, but if you're trying to set something to co start cooking at a later time, the delay function is great. Just make sure that you're aware of any raw meats or things that would spoil if left sitting on, um, you know, where the temperature's not being maintained for an extended period of time. So the delay is off, the keep warm button is default to be on, so that when this stops cooking, it's going to switch over to a warm setting. So I'm gonna press this to select, and, whoops, hang on. I pressed it too many times. So poultry setting, um, there we go. And then, there we 
There we go. <laughs> I, um, I pushed the button too many times. So now it says run. Now, um, I don't know if you guys can see that here, but it says run, and then this little um, wheel right here, it says preheat. So what's gonna happen is this is gonna start preheating, and I actually totally forgot to do a step that I like to give you a little cheat step. If you turn this pot to sear as you're adding in all those ingredients, it speeds up the pressurizing time because it starts heating up the food that we added in first. So the chicken and the corn and the beans, all of that will start warming up while we get everything ready but I totally forgot to tell you that today. Normally that's what I do when I'm cooking, um, when I'm pressure cooking because it just speeds up the process. So the more, the more food that's in here, the longer it's gonna take for this to pressurize. So while we're waiting for that, I'm gonna show you a couple of other really cool things and then we'll go off camera for a little bit and I'll come back and I'll show you the finished product, okay? So what we're gonna do next is I'm gonna make a really delicious bean dip. We're gonna use Pampered Chef's um, a food, a Flex Plus food processor um, to do this. And we're gonna use the multi-blade that's in here or the multi-use blade. So we'll pop this open. This does come with a slicing blade and a grating blade, which I'm gonna show you the grating blade here in just a little bit. But to take this blade off of the post, you're gonna kind of put your hands here on top of the blades. So I always like to hold this so you can see. Twist this post to pop it off. You're gonna pick one blade. You're not gonna use any two at the same time. So the post fits all blades. So we're gonna use the multi-blade. And then let me grab my ingredients here for our bean dip. All right, I've got some extra cilantro because we're gonna need that for our cilantro rice. All right, so for this recipe, we need two cans of black beans. We need a third cup of oil. I'm using Pampered Chef's garlic infused oil, two cloves of garlic, and a little bit of orange juice, and of course, some of our carnitas slow cooker seasoning. We're gonna keep up the trend there. So the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna take my cans of beans, and I'm going to rinse them in my glass bowl again. Oh, you know what I forgot, you guys? I was looking at this and I knew I was forgetting something. I'm gonna press cancel. Okay, this has not pressurized, so it's okay to open this. <laughs> um, I totally forgot to add in the salsa, which we have to have the salsa or this thing will not cook right. So we're gonna take this out. All right, it's sizzling now. <laughs> Yo, camera's not perfect, right? So I make mistakes when I'm cooking all the time. So we need a cup of salsa. So this is a half cup measurement, and this is fresh salsa that I made in my um, food processor, find my lid. See, I got myself all out of sorts here. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to take my scraper and I need to press this salsa down. Can't be salsa chicken if we don't have salsa. And just so you know, the salsa is our liquid, so we have to have that. You don't have liquid, you won't get steam. If you don't get steam, you can't pressure cook. So again, I'm gonna press all three feet to the bottom here, take the ceramic pot, put it on the top, put the lid back on, and let me look at this so I can see. Turn this to poultry. Okay, so we shall start again. <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna do is take our can opener and I'm gonna open two cans of black beans and I'm gonna rinse and drain them. We're gonna put them in our food processor and then we're gonna add a few other ingredients to this. So you've already seen this can opener a few times. Two more times, right? All right, so we're gonna add these beans into our colander, rinse them, give them a little drain. We'll toss them in the food processor and we're gonna add in the juice. Cans to recycle them. Okay. Use the rinse. All right. Pour off this juice. And I'll let that drain in a second. Okay. So for this recipe, we're going to use the two cans of beans. Um, I'm going to add um, two tablespoons of the carnitas slow cooker seasoning. 
quarter cup of orange juice, and a third cup of Pampered Chef's garlic infused oil. I highly recommend this oil. As you can see, I use it a lot and it is delicious. It adds so much great flavor. We're also gonna add in some cilantro. So let me give this a little shake here. Toss that around just enough to get some of those, that water off. Okay. And this bean, the bean dip can be used with chips. You can make this, and even if you're not making this salsa chicken, this is also great for if you wanted to make, um, put your beans on your taco or inside of your taco. So we're gonna do soft tacos today um, with our salsa chicken, but you could do hard tacos, you could do chips. It's totally up to you. So one thing I love about cooking is you can make something your own. You don't have to follow a recipe every time. So quarter cup of orange juice, third cup of oil, my shears. All right, so this is our herb keeper. So I love the herb keeper because it's basically like a vase for your herbs. You fill the water in the bottom, which this is probably needs to be, uh, it's not too bad. Um, I've had this in my fridge for about a week. So you can see they're still nice and fresh. And I have a new bunch because we may not have enough for all of the things that I wanna use it for. Um, <clears throat> take your garlic clove and put it inside of your garlic press. Press the garlic out, scrape it off, and then use your cleaning tool to pop that out. And then we'll toss that in the garbage. Press this, same thing. And then your garlic press is dishwasher safe as well. Right. Now, we're gonna take the lid of our Flex Plus, put that on, then we're gonna use the power handle. So this is what's gonna operate every single appliance. If you're not familiar with our Flex Plus, it's three appliances in one. So you're gonna get the food processor, a hand mixer, as well as an immersion blender. Put the battery on the top. There's a little safety switch here that you're gonna press. I'm gonna increase the speed to the highest speed. Press the button. cilantro got wrapped around the side, which is okay. I'm just going to cut, oh, it's just a couple of stems. I just cut these into shorter pieces. And you don't have to um, leave the stems on there. I just like the stems. It adds so much more flavor. And I should have put them down. Um, whoops. Am I doing this backwards? I always am like, what am I doing wrong here? There we go. All right, I turned my thing around. Just needed a little help on that, those couple stems. All right, so much flavor. And you guys probably cannot hear this, but it's boiling. So everything is getting nice and hot in there. We're going to pull the post out. I'm getting a good grip on this. I don't want to cut myself. Tap this. And then if you need to use the scraper, just be careful not to cut your scrapers. There we go. All right, and I'm gonna serve this in my cool and serve. This is the one cup, my hand is wet and I can't get it open. There we go. <laughs> one cup, cool and serve. So this is what it looks like. And we're gonna just take our frozen insert by putting that frozen piece in there. Then um, it's gonna keep whatever we put on here cold for four to six hours. Then you put your bowl inside and we're gonna scrape out this bean dip. And I do have a recipe on my channel showing you guys how to make guacamole as well as salsa. I don't have guacamole to serve with these tacos today, but I do like making guacamole to go with my tacos. And there's another video on my channel that shows you guys how to make the uh, quick and easy salsa. So here's our bean dip. This is ready to go, ready to dip with chips or um, ready for you to um, add to your taco. 
All right, let me set this aside for the moment. We're gonna take, we're gonna make some flavored sour cream. Now, I am actually not using sour cream, I'm using yogurt. Um, if you wanna cut your calories a little bit, you can make your own yogurt in our deluxe multi-cooker using the yogurt button, which is how I made this. This is just a small portion. Um, it makes about eight cups of yogurt, and it is so easy to make because you only need two ingredients. You need milk, um, I recommend doing the cold start method. And if you do the cold start method, then you don't have to heat anything up because it's already ultra filtered milk. I like the Fairlife brand. There's a video on my channel showing you guys how to do that. But this is the yogurt. It's plain, so it has no flavor at all, which makes it a really great substitute for um, sour cream. So I'm gonna rinse off my spatula here and we're gonna make cilantro sour cream. Once you start adding cilantro to your sour cream, you will never go back <laughs> because it is just so good. I wish I could get this when I go eat Mexican food because it is just so good. So I'm gonna take our herb mill and I'm gonna pop the bottom off of this. My hands are still wet, you guys. You gotta make sure you keep your hands dry <laughs> when you're cooking, for safety, really. So this piece here fits right in the bottom, just like that. And then you have this ceramic ball, which is gonna push the herbs into the mill. So I'm gonna take some more of my cilantro and I'm gonna put it inside. And I am gonna cut the stems off for this. Oops. Most of them anyways. All right, set this aside, put this on there. And then I'm gonna give this just a little shake, okay? And then I'm gonna just grind this up right over the sour cream, give this a shake to get all those leaves out. And if you end up with any of these um, longer pieces, just toss them in the trash, that's what I like to do. Take your um, spatula here, so this is my mini mix and scraper. Just mix this together, and the longer you let these flavors mesh, the better. So we're just going to the lid on this and put this in. Normally I would put this in the refrigerator until I'm ready to serve. All right, next up, I wanna show you guys um, how to shred cheese using our food processor. So give me just a minute to rinse out this bowl and then I'll be right back and we'll make, we'll shred our cheese and we'll check our progress on our deluxe multi-cooker. whenever I'm using cheese. Cheese is one of my favorite ingredients and so I want it to taste really good and I always like to use a lot of extra cheese. Um, you're going to want to use block cheese because if you buy pre-shredded cheese at the grocery store, it contains cellulose powder. If you don't know what that is, go to your fridge, grab a bag of your ch shredded cheese that you have in there and um, look at the ingredient list. It's going to show you cellulose powder. Cellulose powder is basically ground of wood fibers which is sawdust. They put it in the bag of cheese to keep it from clumping and sticking together. Um, and that's why when you shred or grate your own cheese, it does tend to clump together a little bit more. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get some cold cheese out of the refrigerator and show you how quick and easy you can shred your own cheese. So when you buy the cheese in a block, it is a lot cheaper than buying it already pre-shredded. You get a little bit more when you buy it in a block and shred it yourself. And it doesn't have cellulose powder. Oh, I gotta put the blades in here. Hello. <laughs> Do you guys have days like this where like you just make mistake after mistake after mistake? Please tell me I'm not alone. <laughs> gotta rinse my post out here. I actually meant to do the cheese first, but I forgot. I did it in the wrong order. Put the post in here and I'm gonna use our grating blade, which is this one. One side is for fine grating, one side is for coarse grating. So put our lid on here, 
put our cheese in and I just let it rest right there on the, um, the blade. And I'm actually gonna pick it up in a second and get the blade started. And then we will um, finish the sh shredding it. So this is what I find works best. Start the blade and then drop the cheese after you've started, okay? So we're gonna start the blade. cheese shredded in no time. So we're going to take the battery off, take the power stick off, and I don't know if you noticed at the end, I was sort of like just pulsing just a little bit on this piece, and that's just to make sure that I end up with as little um, extra on the top as possible. Pull this out and gently pull this off. These are dishwasher safe. Um, however, I mentioned earlier, the only part of this that's not dishwasher safe this piece comes out and it is dishwasher safe. This part is not, so you're going to want to wash it out um, just in the sink without submerging it in water just to make sure that you don't get into the uh, mechanical part of the product. So look, we have all of our shredded cheese, so we have those ready for our tacos. So let's talk about the tacos. So we are going to warm our tortillas in our tortilla warmer. This is like the coolest thing ever, you guys, and I'm like totally dropping everything. This is so cool. You can use this to warm your tortillas. You can also use it to keep biscuits um, or pancakes and waffles warm while you're finished making your, um, your batches. Um, these are really, really cool. <laughs> and they are just a little bag. You open it right up and you take your tacos. Um, in this case, we're using soft tacos because that's my preference. So what do you like in your kitchen? Do you like hard tacos or soft tacos? So you take all your tortillas and you're gonna stick them in the bag and put this in the bat in the microwave for one minute. Now you're gonna to wanna to wait to do this until right before you're ready to serve this. One minute is gonna heat up these tortillas and it's gonna keep them warm all the way until the last person makes their taco. It's pretty cool. So I'll set these aside for now um, so they don't dry out while I'm waiting on this to cook and then we'll microwave those. So we have for our toppings for our tacos, we have our um, bean dip that we made here today. We have our cilantro sour cream. I have our cheese that we shredded and the quick and easy salsa, which I made in a different video. So you can see what this looks like and that's what we use for the liquid in this recipe. And we'll have our rice to go along with it. And I like using the rice inside of the taco, but it's a total preference for you. You can eat it on the side or you can put it inside of your taco. So that's it for now. Let's check on our progress of our multi-cooker. So you guys see how it's almost completely pressurized. And can you guys see, there's a little bit of steam. I don't know if you can see this in the video, but there's a little bit of steam coming out of the top of the multi-cooker. That's a good thing. That's telling you that this is almost pressurized. And um, if you're losing lots and lots of steam, then um, that's gonna be a problem. But you're getting a little bit totally normal. So when this finishes pressurizing, it's gonna switch over from run to 15 minutes because 15 minutes is the pre-programmed setting for the poultry um, setting on our multi-cooker. It's gonna cook for 15 minutes. When that 15 minutes is up, I'm gonna let it sit. Now it automatically switches over to a warm setting. So the warm setting is gonna then count up. So it counts down when it's cooking, counts up when it's warming, so it tells you how long it's been warming. But also that number is really important because it tells you how long it's been naturally releasing pressure. So you don't have to release the pressure on some recipes. Some of them you do release it right away by pushing the X over here. Other recipes you will wait until the pressure releases on its own, meaning you don't ever push that button. So you always want to follow the recipe um, depending on how it's telling you to um, depressurize. So for this recipe, we want it to naturally release the pressure for 10 minutes. And that's to make sure the rice finishes cooking. So 10 minutes, and then we'll press the X to release any extra steam 
We'll take out our rice, we'll chop our chicken, and then we get to make our tacos. So you guys hang tight. I'll show you the finished product in just a bit. So I'll see you soon. Okay, you guys, just wanna give you an update. We are down to the last minute. So all we're waiting for now is for the time to be up and then to let the pressure cooker switch over to a warm setting. Then we're gonna wait 10 minutes for the pressure to naturally release. That means I'm not gonna do anything to the pot. I'm just gonna leave it sitting here and wait until the count up shows me at least 10 minutes. More is fine, so if you get distracted, don't worry about that. Um, you just want it to naturally release for at least 10 minutes to be sure that the rice finishes cooking, that the chicken is fully cooked, and now you hear our, our wonderful beeper here. <laughs> so when you look here, this is now, this wheel says, keep warm. And so in about 57 seconds or so, <laughs> this is gonna switch over and show you <clears throat> one minute, and then it will continue to count up for as long as you leave the pressure cooker alone. So let's say you wanted to make this before you go to your kids, um, ball game or their other sports activity. You can put this in the pressure cooker, let it finish, let it cook, do its thing, and then it will switch over to a warm setting. So when you get home, all you have to do is either release any extra pressure, or if it's already uh, depressurized, take the lid off, add in the other few ingredients to the rice, and chop the chicken, and then you're ready to make your tacos. So you do have that option as well. So let's just see um, when this flips over to one minute so that you guys will be able to see how the count up feature works. And then I'll let this sit for 10 minutes and then I'll come back and I'll show you the finished product so that you'll know how to make this from start to finish. You guys see how that switched over to one? So hang tight and I will see you guys in a few. Hey everyone, welcome back. Are you guys excited to see our uh, salsa chicken tacos and cilantro lime rice? I know I'm excited to eat this for lunch. So um, we are right at 10 minutes. And so that means that it's been warming for 10 minutes, meaning it's keeping the food the right temperature, but it's also ready for us to release the steam. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take advantage of these handles. I'm gonna pour, pull this, um, or excuse me, point this so that it's going to release the steam away from me. I'm gonna press the X on the front of the uh, deluxe multi cooker. Whoops. <laughs> Let's see here. Oh, I'm pushing. I'm pushing the X. I'm supposed to push the steam. Sorry, guys. Um, I can't come up with my words today, can I? There we go. Here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna wait for all the steam to release. Then we're gonna take out the cilantro lime rice, and we'll have the chicken in the in the pot beneath that. We'll chop that up and then we'll add the other ingredients to our cilantro lime rice. So I'm gonna be using our trivet set. I love this because, look at this. You have three different sized trivets in one set. And so um, I'll have one, I'm just gonna flip this over. I can use this for the um, inner pot. And then I've got the other one, I'll use this for the rice. So for the rice, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in another teaspoon of salt. We're gonna add in some chopped cilantro. So let's go ahead and get that ready to go. And we're also gonna put lemon, uh, excuse me, lime zest and lime juice. Let me grab a cutting mat. Forgot to grab that. I had a knife, I just didn't have a cutting mat. Okay, so let's get our cilantro ready. So just like we did before for the bean dip, and you can see I've put my new bunch of cilantro in here. I'm gonna take my shears and just cut off what I need and put that into our herb milk. And I want a little bit more, so I'll cut some more off, put that in there, and this will be ready for our rice. So this is slowing down, so we should be um, good to go on that here shortly. And then I'm gonna show you a really cool handle or a lid rest that comes with our Deluxe Multi Cooker. It's such a great additional feature that we just added. It's almost there, there we go. So now you can see the lid is loose and um, so that you guys can see I'm gonna let some of that water drip down there but look you can just prop the lid right on the side how cool is that I'm gonna now take the uh, microwave grips I'll give you guys a closer look so you can see what I'm doing here so be really careful with these handles because they are very hot um, I really think everybody who has the quick cooker or the deluxe multi pot needs these now I don't know if you can see what I'm doing but I'm sort of tilting this forward there is some liquid on the top of that silicone lid and since it's hot um, I don't really want 
to burn myself. You can also use your um, microwave grips to reach in and grab that trivet. That trivet is really, really hot, so you wanna make sure that you're really careful with that. So let's go ahead and finish making our rice. So I'm gonna just gently pull this off. This is warm, um, but it's not super hot. Just make sure you pull, uh, open that with the steam away from you. And look, you'll be able to see you have this really nice fluffy rice. Um, I'm going to just sort of fluff it up and then we're gonna add in the remaining ingredients and then we'll chop up our chicken. I'm gonna show you how to keep these warm so that every person has a warm taco. All right, so let me add our salt. And again, this is Pampered Chef's um, coarse Himalayan and sea salt, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, that I ground up in my deluxe cooking blender. So if you haven't seen that video, definitely check that out. I'm gonna zest some limes using our um, zester. And this is an adjustable zester. So you could use it like a kickstand if you wanted to. We'll zest these limes real quick. I did microwave these limes. They're smaller limes. So I only microwave them for like 20 seconds. I usually microwave my citrus fruit for 30 seconds. That's just to help release more juices on the inside. So if you haven't tried that trick, I hope you will. All right. And this is dishwasher safe too. Next, let's put our cilantro in here. I'm just gonna give this a little turn. Chop that in there. I'm gonna cut my limes in half. And then we'll use the citrus press. And I want you guys to see how much juice we get out of these teeny tiny limes. So we're gonna do two limes, four halves, right? This smells so good, you guys. One more. And the citrus press is dishwasher safe. Toss these in the trash. And just remember that this pot is still hot. Um, I like using the harder end of the scoop and drain or scoop and serve. Scoop and spread. I'm telling you all the wrong names. This is the scoop and spread, not what I just told you. <laughs> Mix all this up. And that hard end just helps break up the rice. And then I can mix in the juice, cilantro, and lime zest. Now, you could leave it in this container, but what I recommend is that you scoop it out and put it in our small insulated bowl. And I'm using the ice cream spade because this is like the perfect rice spatula. So if you don't have this yet, be sure to add it to your list. And you could pick up this pot, but it is hot, so I'm just trying not to burn myself. We'll add this in here. Such great flavor. All right, now I have a little bit more in there. I think I can grab this with my, so here we go. Let's see. Yeah, that's still a little hot. I thought maybe I could grab it with one hand, but the um, mini oven mitts would be better for that. Whoops, and here I am making a mess. Okay, so here's our rice. We'll put the lid on there to keep that warm. And let me transfer this to, oops, let me use the handles here, to the sink. And I'll take out our ice cream spade, or yes, the ice cream spade, so we can use that to make our taco. And let's get our chicken out. So I'm gonna use the larger trivet here. And this inner pot is very hot, so another reason that you need to use your microwave grips. Now we're gonna take one of my favorite products, and I should show you what this looks like before I chop it up. So this is what we have, our salsa chicken, and all that liquid that's in there 
came from that salsa that I originally forgot to put in. <laughs> now I'm using our, our salad choppers to chop the chicken and the potatoes. I'm not really concerned about um, if the corn or the beans get a little chopped up. That's not really important to me. But if you um, don't want that, then you can pre-chop your peppers and then take the chicken out and chop them in a separate bowl. But I feel like that's an extra step that's really not needed. So we're gonna shred this. And because this has a lot of liquid to it, I'm going to strain it off. Make sure I don't miss any pieces here. Okay, I'm getting a nice facial. All right, so we're going to, see if I can make some room here. All right, I'm gonna take my lid, put it, maybe I'll put it back on my multi-cooker. I'm gonna move this out of the way. I need a little bit more space. All right, so next, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our large glass bowl, medium colander here. I'm gonna use my um, microwave grips again. You wanna pour this away from you so that it doesn't splash you. All right. And then if you need to scrape any extra out, get yourself a scraper. Okay, this is also a really good opportunity to see if you need to chop any more. So I had a couple little pieces on the bottom that I missed. So here is our chicken taco mixture. And look, so you're gonna get rid of all of that juice. So now, I'm gonna move it again. <laughs> so if you're gonna just serve this right away, then leave it in your multi-cooker and you can keep it on keep warm and don't have to drain it and you can just serve it with a slotted tool if you wanted to. Um, but if you transfer it to the insulated bowl, it's gonna keep it um, hot for two hours, okay? And then when you're ready to serve it, Everybody can make their own taco. So let's make a taco, okay? So let's see, make some room so you can see what I'm doing here. All right, so I've got my top, my tortilla warmers, warmer and my tortillas warmed up. So I'm gonna take one of these out and then um, I'm gonna spread the bean dip first. You can do this in whatever order you like. So I'm gonna make this the way I like to make it. So I'm gonna put the bean dip on here and then I'm going to take some of this um, you guys remember we took the yogurt which is plain yogurt made in the multi cooker and I added in some chopped cilantro so we're going to add that I'm just using my small spreader I'm spreading this around because the toppings are more evenly distributed <laughs> more in every single bite when you do it this way okay you may not want to go to this much effort when you are making your taco but like I said this is how I like to make mine all right I'm going to use the other side of my scoop and spread add some salsa and you guys the leak proof containers are one of my favorite things I use them to store everything in my fridge sometimes on the counter just depends on what is in it but once you get a set, you're gonna be ordering another one. And if you're new to my channel, I am a consultant with a camper chef, so I do earn commission on the products that you purchase from me. So I would love the opportunity to be your consultant. All right, do some cheese. It's gonna be a thick taco, right? The little's good, a lot better. And then I'm gonna add some rice because I like to put the rice inside of the taco. Spread that around, but you can serve this on the side if you prefer. All right, and then last but not least, we need the chicken. All right, where did I put my spreader? I thought I kept it out. Get a little bit more chicken. So there we have our delicious taco. You can fold it in half and 
enjoy. So this is how you make salsa chicken tacos, cilantro lime rice, and carnitas bean dip. So quick, so easy. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Can't wait to help you with your deluxe multi cooker. And just remember, all the videos on my quick cooker playlist can be made in the multi cooker. And if you have any questions about anything, please feel free to reach out to me. Don't forget to go to the flipflopchef.com. Click the button at the top to join my recipe community. You can also sign up for my email newsletter there and contact me if you have any questions. I always love to hear where you're watching from. I look forward to seeing you next time. That's all for today.